Now in Python, you've been using functions throughout your learning journey so far. So some of the most common that you would have seen is things like print, which we use to output text to the console. So I won't go through how these work, because you know, but I just want you to be aware that we're using the print function by calling it by name, and then we can pass different things to it in brackets here. Now, you're going to want to learn how to make your own functions. It might not seem important with the types of challenges we've done so far, but as your programs become bigger, functions become more and more important. So before I explain why, let's take the analogy that we're going to make some breakfast. So imagine we're going to make a program that is all about making our breakfast. Now we're going to want to break that down into smaller chunks. So, because taking the whole program on at one piece is, is quite a task. And if we were trying to write it all in one big long line of code, that would be very difficult. So we try and tackle them small problems at a time. So you could probably summarize making breakfast as making your toast and making yourself a cup of tea. And then within each of those, we could probably break those down further. So with making toast, we could say we want to slice the bread. We then want to toast the bread. We then want to butter the toast, add the jam, etc. And then with a cup of tea, you could say you've got to boil the water, then you've got to brew the tea, then you've got to add the milk. Now, this concept is known as decomposition. And it's probably one of the most important things to learn as a programmer and the ability to break down the larger problem that you're trying to solve into smaller, more manageable problems. So that's known as decomposition. That helps you work out how to tackle a problem. And then functions come in because it gives you a way of uh, creating a block of code that you can call time and time again. When your programs get bigger, you're not going to typically write thousands and thousands and thousands of lines of code in one file. You will separate your code over lots of different files and you'll put them under different functions that do different jobs and then you will call the functions as you need them. So we'll start simple. Let's start by making a very basic function. And then you'll see as your programs become more advanced going forwards and you see some of the challenges I do, why this is a really essential way of programming so that your code doesn't get messy and complicated. Also by making functions, you build up a whole portfolio of different functions you've made that do different jobs. And when you come to take on a new task or a new challenge or a new project you can reuse functions that you've made before because you broke them down to such a level they become very reusable blocks of code so to make your own function you start by just writing def so def means define so i'm defining a function here so if i define a function and we'll keep it simple so i'm just going to make a very simple welcome message function so I need to give it a name. And again, I'd strongly encourage you to use either camel case like I have or have it all lowercase and use underscores to separate out when you've got more than one word. Just like naming your variables, the name of a function should help the user understand what it's doing. So this is going to just display a nice welcome message. So it's going to be very simple. You'll see in future videos how we can make these more complicated. But I'm just going to say welcome from a function okay so i've defined my function i've called it welcome message i need to include brackets which we're going to sometimes pass things to the function but i'll come on to that later then you need your colon and then just like you learnt with if statements and loops and everything indentation is very important so any code that's nested here with a tab space any code that's here, however many lines of code that might be, they all belong to this welcome message function. So here we've got a very simple function that when I run it, nothing happens. And this is, I've seen lots of people get confused with this, but when you define a function, you're telling the computer how that works. So you're telling it, if I ever see welcome message get used, this is the instructions of what I want it to do. But when you define it, that's not actually running the code. That's just making the computer understand what welcome message means. So if I go lower down, so I need to go back. So I'm outside of the function, just like before when I did print, 
I can now just write welcome message like that. And when I run it, it says welcome from a function. So it's running whatever code is inside this function. And obviously the idea of functions is you're making code that's reusable. So you can call it however many times you want throughout your code. So if there's ever a block of code that you think you might want to reuse, then putting it in a function is a very good idea. So that's the basics of how to create and how to call a function. The other common mistake I've seen people make is you want to make sure that you define all of your functions at the top of the document. Because if I do this, I've got an error. So you should all make sure all of your defined functions are high up at the top of the document so that whenever you need them later, the computer understands where they are and what that means. Because on this, the computer's running from line one down. Line one's commented, so it doesn't do anything. When it gets to line three, it says welcome message. So it knows I'm calling the function welcome message. But look, it says name welcome message is not defined. So at line three, you haven't told the computer what welcome message is because you've not done that until line five. So you should make sure all of your function definitions are high up in the document. So whenever you call them, the computer knows how to run that function. So that's the very basics of how to make a very simple function and how to call it, which is this block here. Now, technically, this is what we'd call a procedure, but I'll come on to the differences between procedures and functions in a couple of videos time.